after studying this module you shall be able to learn the d by huckel theory its postulates and its mathematical treatment in a non electrolytic solution the solute particles are uncharged therefore long range coulombic interactions are not observed in these type of solutions the short range interactions arising from dipole dipole or dispersion forces become significant only when the concentration of the solute is high thus in a dilute non electrolytic solution there are no interactions between solute particles on the other hand electrolytic solution contains strong ion ion interactions and ion solvent interactions such solutions where ion ion interactions cannot be ignored are termed as real or non ideal solutions non ideality in these solutions arises because oppositely charged species attract each other due to electrostatic forces while ions of same charge repel each other we can appropriately say that there are no interactions between solute particles in dilute electrolytic solutions long range coulombic interactions between ions is ignored and only ion solvent interactions are considered since in non ideal solutions ion ion interactions are present it is just not the analytical concentration of the species that can be used but it is the effective concentration that is used we define this active concentration as activity abbreviated as ai of the species mathematically it is given by a equal to gamma into m where a is the activity gamma is the activity coefficient which is concentration dependent and m is the molality expressed in moles per kg individual ionic activity coefficients cannot be determined experimentally this is because in an electrolytic solution positive and negative ions cannot be treated separately as the cations are always accompanied by anions and vice versa therefore the individual concentrations of the ionic species to the concentration cannot be determined thus activity coefficient of individual ions are inaccessible to experimental measurement we can only measure the activity coefficient of the net electrolyte therefore we define mean ionic terms for the ions in solution of strong electrolytes mathematically for an electrolyte of the type axby which dissociates as x a to the power y plus plus y b to the power x minus mean ionic activity is given as a plus minus is equal to a plus to the power x into a minus to the power y or a plus minus can also be written as x to the power x y to the power y m to the power x plus y gamma plus to the power x into gamma minus to the power y where gamma plus is the activity coefficient for cations gamma minus is the activity coefficient for anions and m is the molality de by huckel suggested a theory which relates the theoretical individual activity of coefficients gamma plus and gamma minus to the experimentally accessible mean ionic activity coefficient gamma plus minus with the help of this theory the distribution of charges around ions in solution was clearly understood now we shall see the de by huckel theory the de by huckel theory for determination of mean activity coefficients gamma plus minus was proposed by peter de by and eric huckel in 1923 this theory is applicable to strong electrolytes for example salts strong electrolytes are neutral and dissociate completely it is a theoretical explanation for deviation from ideality in solutions for strong electrolytes this theory is an analytical approach to the factors influencing activity coefficients of ionic solutes de by and huckel developed this theory with which individual activity coefficients can be calculated and using this mean activity coefficients is calculated which could be tested against the experimental data a detailed description of de by huckel theory will include the discussion of the assumptions the mathematical development limitations and applications 
Now we should see the postulates of D by Huckel theory. The basis of the D by Huckel theory is laid on strong electrolytes. The electrolytic solution consists of solvated ions and water molecules. The basic representation of an idealized electrolytic solution is shown in the ions are represented as squares with unit electrical charge. The solvent is shown as a uniform medium. Each ion is surrounded more closely by ions of the opposite charge than by the ions of the same charge. The principal assumption is that departure from ideality is due to electrostatic interactions between ions which varies inversely as 1 by r square. Figure shows the ideal representation of a 1 is to 1 electrolyte. The postulates of the D by Huckel theory are number 1, the ion were treated as bond charges, number 2, the ion-ion interactions were assumed to be long-range coulombic forces which varies as 1 by r square while short-range non-coulombic forces or dispersion forces play a negligible role. Number three, the role of solvent is to provide a medium which is a continuum of dielectric constant epsilon which is necessary for the operation of inter-ionic forces. In the present case, the water molecules are looked upon as a continuous dielectric medium. Number four, the concept of charge density abbreviated as rho was introduced which measured charge density as a function of distance r. All the ions in the electrolytic solution are free to contribute to charge density. Bulk charge density rho r0 was assumed to be zero which means that the solution is overall electrically neutral. The basic precept of this theory is that because of attraction between positive and negative ions there are on an average in the vicinity of a particular ion, more ions of opposite sign and this will reduce the effective concentration of ions. Consequently, if the solution is diluted, the separation of ions involves doing an additional work to overcome these interionic interactions and this represents deviation from an ideal solution. Ultimately, D by Huckel theory generates a relationship between mean activity gamma plus minus coefficient and the strength I. Now we shall see the mathematical treatment. The first step in the D by Huckel approach is the arbitrary selection of a reference or central ion from the assembly of ions in solution. The solution contains ions surrounded by water molecules. Only the reference ion carries a discrete charge zi e0. In this case, water is acting as the solvent. Therefore, water molecules provide a continuum dielectric medium. The remaining ions of the solution are spread out into a continuous spatial distribution of charge. Figure shows a schematic comparison of Part A, the assembly of ions and solvent molecules in a real electrolytic solution and Part B, the D by Huckel picture in which reference ion is surrounded by net charge density rho. The total charge into the atmosphere and on the reference ion is exactly equal but has opposite sign. Now we will discuss ion-ion interactions in detail in order to evolve a quantitative measure of these interactions. Consider an initial state where ion-ion interactions are absent. This state is referred as the discharge state or switched off state. We also have a final state where these ion-ion interactions come into play. This state is known as the charged state or the switched on state. Figure shows the free energy change delta G I I of ion ion interactions in going from discharge state to a charged state. Then the free energy change in going from the initial state to the final state is considered as the free energy change delta G I I for ion ion interactions. The initial state is an ideal case but it is a hypothetical situation as we cannot take ions in vacuum and moreover when these ions enter the solvent there will be ion solvent interactions. Thus initial state is an imaginary state of non-interacting ions which implies that it is an assembly of discharged ions. 
In this state, the reference ion is in the discharged state, that is, its charge is zero and thus ion-ion interactions are zero with respect to the reference ion. On the other hand, the charged state is the real or the actual case, where the reference ion carries a charge equal to ZIE0 and ion-ion interactions are present. Figure shows the free energy change delta GII of ion-ion interactions is the electrostatic work of taking an imaginary assembly of discharged ions and charging them up to obtain a solution of charged ions. Thus, the process of going from an initial state of non-interacting ions to a final state of ion-ion interactions is equivalent to taking an assembly of discharged ions and charging them up and this electrostatic charging work is taken equal to the free energy change delta GII of interactions. We should note that during the entire charging process both the positively charged and negatively charged ionic species are charged. Therefore, we obtain a free energy change which involves the contribution from all ionic species which constitutes the electrolyte. Our main aim is to isolate the contribution to the free energy of ion-ion interaction arising from one ionic species I only. By definition, this partial free energy change is the chemical potential change delta mu I I arising from the interactions of one ionic species with the ionic assembly. Figure shows the chemical potential delta mu I I arising from the inter-ionic interactions of an ionic species I with the electrolytic solution. If we want to calculate the work of charging up the mole of a reference ion from a state of zero charge to its final charge ZIE0, then the charging work is W times the Avogadro's number Na and this is equal to the partial molar free energy of ion-ion interactions, that is the chemical potential of ion-ion interactions. Mathematically, delta mu I I is equal to Na into W. The chemical potential mu I of a non-electrolyte solution is represented using the classical thermodynamic formula as given by equation mu I equals to mu I naught plus R T ln X I where X I is the concentration of the solute in mole fraction and mu I naught is the chemical potential in the standard state. For dilute solutions where the concentration of solute is low, the short range interactions become insignificant. It is referred as an ideal case. Previously, ionic solutions were treated in the same way as non-electrolytic solutions even though ionic solutions contained charged species. But as we know, in ionic solutions, there exist ion-ion and ion-solvent interactions. Therefore, we cannot use the same classical thermodynamic formula as we have used for non-electrolyte solutions. Here, the concentration term Xi is modified and we use activity for such type of solutions. Thus, the chemical potential is given as by equation as mu i is equal to mu i naught plus r t ln a i. Since a i that is the activity is equal to m i into gamma i, for an ideal case gamma i is equal to 1. Therefore, a i is equal to m i. Therefore, for ideal case equation can be written as mu i equals to mu i naught plus r t ln m i. On the other hand, when the concentration of solute is high, the short range interactions which arise from dipole-dipole or dispersion forces become significant. This is referred as the real case and the chemical potential can be represented as by equation 7 as mu i r equals to mu i naught plus r t ln m i gamma i. 
the change in the chemical potential from real to ideal case is given by equation 8 as delta mu equals to mu i r minus mu i i. Using equation 6 and 7 in this equation 8 we get delta mu equals to rt ln m i gamma i by m i or delta mu is equal to rt ln gamma i where delta mu is the change in chemical potential or Gibbs flow energy per mole or the work done in charging the reference ion from 0 to zi e naught. Rearranging equation we get ln gamma i is equal to delta mu by rt. Using equation 3 in equation we get ln gamma i is equal to w into na by rt. Thus equation fetches us with a relationship between the mean activity coefficient gamma and the work done in charging the reference ion from a discharge state to a charge state that is w. Now we shall summarize what we have learnt in this module. Ionic solutes when present in high concentration show deviations from ideality. Electrolytic solutions are non-ideal because of the powerful long-range forces between ions. Thus, electrostatic forces are considered to be the predominant forces acting upon ions in solutions. The debye huckel approach has been proposed in order to calculate mean activity coefficient of ions in solution. Thus, this theory analyzes the factors that influence the ionic activity of ions in solution. The debye huckel theory assumes a number of conditions although many of these assumptions are questionable. A hypothetical state in the electrolytic solution is considered where ion-ion interactions do not operate and another state where the interactions come into play due to charging of ions. Thus, the free energy delta GII of ion-ion interactions is the electrostatic work of taking an imaginary assembly of discharged ions and charging them up to obtain a solution of charged ions. The chemical potential delta mu i i arises from interactions of an ionic species with the solution and this is equal to the Avogadro number Na times the electrostatic work W of taking an imaginary solution in which one reference ion is alone and discharged and charging this reference ion. Delta mu ii is therefore equal to Na times W.